UK of Simbox in association with Clint Patrick. Delighted to be joined by the man himself, Kieran Farrell. How are you doing, Kieran? Yeah, good, Luke. Good. So we're we're here now. You're in, in part of the, the MTK fight week bubble. Last minute call up for Ed Harrison. He's going in with Isaac Lowe, a dangerous opponent. First and foremost, Kieran, how did the opportunity come around for Ed Harrison? Again, a last minute call up. Look, I'll be honest, like, this is how the, all, all the opportunities are coming around for any fighter these days, you know what I mean? Um, I, I, to be fair, like, it, Isaac's a good fighter. Um, he's a top 10 world rated fighter as well. And obviously, he's a Tyson Fury's cousin. But um, I believe Ed can fight, mate. Ed believes he can fight. Um, it weren't a fight what I turned away, you know what I mean? Uh, I negotiated a better deal for him, so we got more money. And, um, yeah, we were like, fuck it, let's do it, you know what I mean? And Ed's always up for a fight, and Ed's always in the gym, and he's actually, what no one knows as well, we're not really put it out there yet, uh, Ed's fighting next week against the kid who crawled fought on his last fight, the Spanish kid, uh, Frank Urquiago, uh, he's fighting him in Barcelona. So, um, it, 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 look, I'm like, this is just, we'll see how we'll see how the fight goes tonight. I believe Ed can beat him. I, I do believe he can beat him. He's not it. I, Ed's not a journeyman. He's just not here to lie down. He's here to fight and he's here to win. Um, hopefully he can go out there. It was different last time. Last time we fought, it was the away fight or against Adam Azim. Adam Azim's a big kid. He's come down from welterweight to fight at lightweight uh, as, a, as a pro. Um, and it was a dangerous fight. Ed's a featherweight. Ed's weighed nine stone one yesterday, you know what I mean? And this is more sort of suitable fight for Ed because the weight, the weight site, you see the size of Ed, Ed looks like massive compared to um, Isaac and um, he's got to use that tomorrow and we'll see you know what I mean like like I say you can't can't deny Isaac's a classic kid he's done he's done a lot as an amateur and now he's come through the pro ranks he's doing really well um, so uh, it's unfair for me to say oh yeah I think Ed could beat him Ed could do this but I, I do believe Ed is a good fighter and Ed on his day uh, it, I mean if Isaac takes his eye off the ball tonight because he thinks it's a, a walk around walk in the park six rounder He's, he's got another thing coming because Ed can fight, you know what I mean? And Ed's going to be dangerous all the way through. As we've seen on social media, and you mentioned it there, Tyson Fury is obviously in within the bubble, uh, with the MTK fight night bubble. And this has kind of elevated the show. Uh, you know, it's brought a lot more publicity to the show, of course, with the, the World Heavyweight Champion being there. Um, yeah. And it's kind of brought a lot more attention to Isaac Lowe's fight with Ed Harrison. Yeah. Do you think this is something Ed will thrive on? Do you feel like he loves the, the big stage and the bigger the opponent? Yeah, the look, I, 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 it doesn't matter if you put Ed in New York Madison Square Garden or you put him in the fucking the, the holiday in. It doesn't matter where it is, you know what I mean? Uh, once you're in there, you're in there, you know what I mean? And to be fair, Ed loves being around these events and that. And um, like I say, if, 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 if we went back to last year, uh, January, February, March, before... Um, before the pandemic, Ed was starting out on the road and he fought Aberdeen, he fought Mark McKeown. Mark McKeown just got a, a really good KO win over Brad Dawes and Ed took him the distance and it was a hard fight. Look, that was an hard fight. Mark McKeown's a, a future star. Um, then um, he fought uh, last minute notice. I'm talking 10am Saturday morning. Can you fight? He went up and fought. Matthew Fitzsimmons. Matthew Fitzsimmons is a good fighter. I used to manage him, and um, he uh, he lost some points, but he weren't he weren't fit for the fight. You know what I mean? And um, uh, but what I'd shown that he could like he put like with a bit of notice, he could have probably done a lot better. Then um, he fought the week after against Ismail Khan. Ismail Khan's a top fighter, a very big fighter as well, very big fighter for the weight. Um, so um, he uh, fought uh, so he's all and three at this point. Yeah, he's all and three. Then he fights on my show against five and all Liam Gaynor, and they beats him. And he beat him, Andy. You know what I mean? I thought he did anyway. Like he, he weren't Andy on the scorecard, but in my opinion, he he, he, he could. He was one punch away from knocking him out. And then that's when the career proper took off really for him. Even though it was a pandemic, he got the fight with um Bill Al, um and um uh, it was Andrew Kane next. So it was a uh, one and four then. Then he fought Bill Al. He went two and four. And then um, if I had him as in two and five, and it, 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 if if he was doing the the prospect thing, fighting the um, the journeyman's himself, look, Bed could go ten and oh, he could go fifteen and oh easily, you know what I mean? But he just chose a different route, and 
Um, he, uh, he look at uh, I, I, a couple of good wins can put them into a big fight. You know what I mean? And that's that, and that's where it stands at the minute. You know what I mean? Definitely. I think there's a you know there's a difference between a couple of good wins and picking up a win against an undefeated Isaac Lowe. I think this will take him beyond where even he maybe believes he'll go with a with a win. Tonight. Yeah, well, I mean, look. To be fair, to be fair, Luke. I don't want to get overexcited. It's what Ed does in the ring. Ed, I know Ed's are capable of beating him. I know we can do it. It's just what he does in the ring. You know what I mean? It's whether he's feeling it or not. You know what I mean? And and I think I, I, I'll be honest. He's not coming here. To, I, he's not. He's got a. He got sponsored the other day. Uh, uh, some some local lads that he was Mitch Rose uh, painting. They sponsored him, and you know uh, he's not coming to try and just. Make uh, just trying to uh, make numbers up his ear to uh, have a fight, you know what I mean? And uh, he wants to win, and we know that winning's harder than losing. Look, I've got loads of respect for the journeyman, but winning's winning's harder than losing. You can lose it, you can lose every week. That's easier, you know what I mean? It's not easier, but it's easy enough. You, you know, you got to go in there, take part, and that's all you're doing. Uh, but winning it, it requires effort, and effort you got to you got put in yourself, you know what I mean? And that's um, that's what we're all uh, Ed can do tonight if he puts the effort in, mate. He'll win. So throughout the pandemic, the one thing that we kind of took from boxing, be it from yourself or Eddie Hearn or Frank Warren, yeah. was he was telling fighters stay ready. Uh, there's there's nobody really like Ed Harrison in terms of staying ready, getting these last minute call ups. He fought seven times in 2020 in a pandemic. I dare say he might have been the most active boxer in the UK. Well, he's, he's fighting this week and next week, so uh, <laughs> it's getting pretty active again. No, you know what I mean? Definitely, but again, it just goes to show the importance. He's always there or thereabouts. I've spoke to him a few times in, in the gym and, you know, he's always on weight or around the, the right weight class. He doesn't seem to fluctuate because he's quite tall see, for the weight. He doesn't fluctuate yeah. weight at all. And Yeah, and see, you know what? He, he, well, well, I rang him. He went nine stone eight, so he was around about 60 kilo. And he weighed in today, uh, yesterday at 57 kilogram. Um, easy, easy, easy for him. You know what I mean? And um, he, uh, he is, is um, is a good, is a good advertisement for pro boxing to any amateur coming through. Now you look at Ed and what he's doing. To be fair, to be fair, Luke, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put it out there, and I'm gonna be like, look, all my fighters in the gym, Amy Timlin. Uh, my, bro- my brother he fell off it last year with the pandemic and that but he's back in the gym now he's training hard he wants to fight um, he wants to, he wants the names as well you know what I mean um, Ben Ridings has just actually what's up me a photo as we speak and he's just been sparring with Callum Johnson um, Niall Fielding is in like he drinks his own piss but he's a uh... <laughs> seen that clip I've seen that madness yeah he drinks his own piss but he, he, he's, he, he's a good lad and he's a um, he's a uh, about three pounds off his weight, you know what I mean? Um, Connor Lynch, another one, like you look at him and he's, he, he was probably a few kilograms off his weight, but the same as he's, at, he, he's, he's, he's training day in, day out. Uh, the, all, all them guys in my gym, I've got this um, thing where, and it, I'm sort of learning all the time and um, and just know from my own experience of boxing is that it's no good fluctuating in weight. Doing that Ricky Atten thing worked for Ricky Atten. It didn't work for me. It didn't work for fucking Brian Rose back in the day. You know, it don't work for fighters. You've got to stay fit. You've got to stay within half a stone of your weight all the time. And then when it comes to making that weight, it's easier done. Um, you can take that short, short last minute fight because the pandemic, not just the pandemic, but this is just in, in general, them opportunities for fighters. Um, I think I've seen Sonny Edwards before saying uh, on, a, on an interview saying, um, that he likes to give his opponent eight week notice to start the other. He's the only one who does that, though. Do you know what I'm saying? Because like everyone else loves that advantage of, oh yeah, we've got this guy last minute notice. He's not ready for the fight. You know what I mean? Um, so it is that 99 percent of the time you're going to get a phone call at a week's notice, and the lads coming through the small old circuit, Luke. They've got a, they've got to know that. Look, there is no big contracts for them until. This win a fight, and when they win a fight, they get a rolling contract. It's a winner stays on. You fight one, you win one, you get contracts for another fight. You fight that, you win that, you get a contract for another fight. You fight that, you lose that, and you're gone. You're back on a small old scene selling tickets again, and that's just the way it works. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So as we say, you, you're part of the the MTK bubble. You've been in a BT bubble, the the matchroom bubbles. You're getting used to this uh, life in bubbles. Is there any chance of, of defending your darts title at MTK, or is that strictly matchroom? 
Nah, fuck that. Nah. It's fine with me that now, you know what I mean? I'm keeping that. I'm keeping it. I actually I'm gonna I'm gonna come clean now. Um uh, <laughs> what's he called? Um Lerone Richards. Lerone Richards beat me at darts, yeah. I'm not ever gonna lie, yeah. And do you want me to tell you the truth now, yeah? I'm gonna tell you the truth. Yeah, it was I was playing shit at the day though, you know what I mean? I was playing shit. And he did it fair play to Lerone he beat me fair and square. But this is the worst of them all, uh, Luke, yeah? So I'm gone to the dartboard to go and play some darts with Ben Ridings. Who's playing darts? Have a guess. So this is the matchroom bubble? Yeah, this is the matchroom bubble. When Ben Ridings were fighting. Eddie, Eddie Earn, was he playing? It was Jez Smith playing. No way. Yeah. So I get the darts. I'm not a felon, you know what I mean? It was over the fight, it is what it is. I'll play my game of darts. Come beats me at darts. Oh, no. He beat me. Woman. He beat me, bro. He beat me. And then he went and beat Ben in the fucking ring. <laughs> I never spoke about it before. This is this is being released now to you. I'm, I'm coming clean. I've got to get off my chest, mate. I got beat off you. I got beat. <laughs> Superb, superb. So moving forward from tonight, uh, Kieran, a couple of things I wanted to touch on. Of course, we've got Brian Rolls fighting out in Spain. You mentioned there about Ed having another fight after tonight scheduled. Is that on the same card as, as Brian Rolls? It is. Um, they was looking for a few opponents for um, other Spanish fighters who were on the bill. And I said, look, I've got Ed Harrison. Um, and there was a, a couple of others, but like... There's not many bigger guys there, you know what I mean, over in Spain. So it was more like, um, uh, have you got have you got a lightweight? It's for this Frank Urquigio uh, or whatever he's called. And um, yeah, and the Ed were like, yeah, let's do it. You know what I mean? I mean, and to be fair, Luke, the person isn't great, but it's the experience, you know what I mean? Ed was buzzing. Ed was like, look, I, I, I said, look, I, I'd be honest, if it was me, I'd be turning it away because of the purse. The purse weren't great, but um, he's not doing it for money. He's not there for money. He's there to experience this life and and come on. Because I'll be honest, uh, Luke. When we all die, we're not we're not bringing the money with us. Oh, but we can take every experience and every 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 uh, all them experiences with us. You know what I mean? And and you know it, that's what it's about. You know what I mean? Life's about living the experience and not fucking um um being money hungry all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a great attitude of scene as well that it's going to be broadcast on. Fight TV, so it's got a UK yeah. platform. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, it's good to get them out there. And like, I'll be honest, it, it'd be nice for everyone to tune in and that, you know, to watch Brian Rose. And I know how good he's been. He's been sparring, mate. He's been sparring very good. And um, yeah, look, um, Brian Rose has got plenty of years left in him. He's lived a good lifestyle away from the gym, and um, he's definitely, he, he definitely has got a few good fights left in him. Definitely. Are you able to travel out with the guys? Will you be going? Yeah, I'll be going, mate. Like, it's a mad one. Like, Luke. You can't fly, yeah? So you can't fly. You can't get a ferry. We've got a drive there. So we're t- taking a 24-hour drive to Barcelona. But what I... I don't know. Um, That's why Matchroom Spain pulled their card in Spain for the week after because they knew they couldn't fly. So they've put it back to April um, considering that the, um, the travel ban is up for UK citizens into Spain. But we're just going to drive there, mate. We've got the... Uh, we're, we're, they're exempt but like UK citizens can't fly in or can't get a ferry over it's a bit of a loophole we're going to drive over mate so who's who's in the who's in the car driving over yourself Ed, Brian it's going to be some road trip that, and you get, get it on camera and you can uh, yeah mate you know what we've that. got Rihanna DeForo's um, a WBC ambassador so little Rihanna's coming um, with her dad Liam's going to drive us down there um, we've got um, we've got we're going to do a, ca- a, a carpool karaoke and um, it, me and Rihanna have got unfinished business. We need to get it out, see who the best singer is, you know, because she is a good singer, mate. But I'll be honest, like, my vocals are pretty good, you know what I mean? I've been told that I'm pretty good and I could make it on the X Factor. So Confidence, love the confidence. So touching on Brian Rose there, of course, he's looking to, to get back in. It's going to be 18 months or so since he last fought, that, that lost to Fowler. There's a lot of noise about Scott Fitzgerald. We know that, we know about that fight, but... If not Scott Fitzgerald, which doesn't seem likely at the minute, who else is out there for Brian Rose? Who's he tied? Well, it's not. It's not like that at the minute because they don't want to fight him. You know what I mean? It's simple as that. It's not likely because they don't want to fight him. Um, like they've said, they've said to Matchroom, they want an easier fight. 
So like, I don't know. I don't know if you can get an easier fight than a guy who's been out for two years. You know what I mean? But then whatever, let them do what they're doing. Let them go and fight some some in, uh, import over here, um, and uh, let them have that big foul fight. We're going to make a load of money from that. Like, fair play to them. They're doing it right. They're managing him right. They don't want that fight. You know what I mean? It's fair play to them. But um, just don't don't piss about and say that you're having a fight three other times. You know what I mean? But it's like I say. We're, I'm, I'm not too bothered anyway. Brian's got his career to focus on and he's got a fight next week in Spain against a former Spanish champion. Um, get a win from there. I've already been, sp- I've spoken to Robert Diaz at uh, Golden Boy Promotions about fights over in the US. I've spoken to um, um, Eric Boccio from um, Matchroom USA, the matchmaker over there. They've, they offered me a fight um, for uh, a good fight uh, with a good purse. And um, yeah, look, we're in it for experience. It's not about the money. Uh, it's about experience. But uh, let's, you know, if, if he could fight on a Canelo, um, Canelo Saunders card, then fuck it, let's go and do it. You know what I mean? But it doesn't matter about money. It matters about the experience of what we're doing. You know what I mean? And um, look, if there's anyone to make it happen, I'm the man to do it. You know what I mean? And I'll keep knocking on the door. I'll keep knocking on the door. And then when they keep shutting the door in my face, I'll keep knocking on the door and I'll boot the door down. You know what I mean? And that's what it's about. Great attitude, great attitude. Somebody else I wanted to mention, come up with a conversation earlier on, but Amy Timlin, how's she looking with the injury? Is she back in training yet? Look, Amy Timlin, the injury put her out of training. Um, and fair play to her, look, it was her decision. Um, and I think she sort of regretted the decision, but then she made the right decision for herself. Because if you're not going to go into a, a Commonwealth title fight, Commonwealth title fight 100%, then you're not, you know, it's not, it's no good for you. It's no good for your mental side of things either. So, um, but look, she's been on fire since she's been back in training. You know what I mean? She's been on fire, and she can't wait. And uh, uh, there's been a few dates touted to us um, around about May time. So look, when 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 Dave Caldwell um, speaks to Eddie Earn and gets the date for us, we're, we're ready. She's she's training hard. She's training two three times a day. Uh, she's got fire back in her belly. And um, it's just what she needed. I think it was a big transition because she moved from Leamington Spa after her last fight to my uh, to my house, my mum's house. She moved into my mum's house, and um, obviously it was a big transition. But now she made a transition. She's loving it. She's like a different girl. She talks now. She actually talks, Luke. You know what I mean? She talks a little bit anyway. She's still a bit thick and that, but she's um, she's definitely she's definitely a different sort of girl now. You know what I mean? Definitely. I think. Once that fight was was delayed, the rematch with Carly Skelly, it kind of shown that you know the disappointment. As of course, like it was out of anyone's hands, no one was to blame. It was an injury, but yeah. it's shown the excitement that's around that fight. And I'm sure when it does get rescheduled, you know there's a lot of anticipation yeah, surrounding I'll the rematch. Honest, I'll, be honest, Luke, I'll, I'll be honest, Luke. Amy Timlin will show levels, and I know she can show levels. She's going she gonna show levels, mate. She will show levels and. And do be like, wow, that's a different fight. You know what I mean? It's a different fight, and and it's all it's all within. She's all within her, you know what I mean? And I, and I was disappointed on the night last time. Uh, I felt she'd just done enough uh, with the better quality shots. I can see why people thought she uh, Carly Skelly won. But Ka- Amy Simlin made it close of, uh, a closer fight. She made it like it, she could have done her so much better in the fight. And, and uh, I was disappointed that she probably only shown 50% of what she could really do. And if, if and when Amy Simlin turns up at that next fight, and smashes around, smashes Carly Skelly around the ring. I won't be surprised about like, Well, that's what she could have done the first time, you know what I mean? Because I know how good she is. She's not she's not a bullshit. Amy Timlin's a real deal, man. She she can fight, you know what I mean? So she just needs to go out there and show it. And she's only 21 years old, you know what I mean? She's got the world at her feet, you know what I mean? And that that one fight there will take her on to the next one, take her on to the next one, you know what I mean? So look, we're, I, I'm 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 pretty, pretty good and pretty um, confident in Amy Timlin. She's running up the fucking hill every week. She's training hard. Uh, can't ask her any any more from her. Um, like I say, let's go and let's go and do it now. You know what I mean? Whenever the date comes, we're ready for it. So we obviously had the announcement that June twenty first. Hopefully, all restrictions are lifted, and we're almost a year to the day since your last show was it uh, in Bolton last year, March fourteenth. So you know we're a couple of days away from the year anniversary. How eager are you to yeah. get the small hall shows back rolling? You know, maybe September or October time, maybe. You know what, mate? I'll be honest. Like, it's just, it's just been a mad. It's been a mad twelve month, mate. I think mean, you know what I mean. It's been a mad twelve month. But I just think that there's no rush with everything because when everything comes back, there's going to be no normality. Uh, I was saying this to Joe Gallagher yesterday, actually. 
because Joe was asking me about doing a show and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Like, I'm good. I've got, I've got, I had plans of looking at shows for June time because we're allowed a thousand people back in. Um, obviously, uh, that one thousand people can make it one thousand times easier for promoters to do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, a thousand tickets is a, is a lot. I the income from a thousand tickets is a lot of money compared to what you were trying to do it with a behind closed door show with no income. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but we're in no rush. We're gonna. We're, 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 I, I've got a small stable now, uh, Luke. Yeah, and the reason be it behind that. I've tried saying it last time. Last time I tried saying it to you, but I, it come out all wrong, if you will. People have been mithering me to turn pro and that. I've been like, I don't, I don't want it. I don't want that. You know what I mean? I want quality in my camp. Um, uh, I only want good fighters. I, I, I don't want like average fighters. I want good fighters. Uh, with my own fighters I've got now, I've got good fighters. And uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, and I've still probably got a, cu- a couple to cut through. You know what I mean? I've still probably got a cu- couple to cut through, but I'm doing it in, a, in, a, in an honest way, in a nice way. I'm going to tell them straight. And if they don't like it, they can, they can leave. And, it, and, and, and I said it to all my fighters and I've been straight with it. Um, there's no, it's no good. And I've seen Neil Marsh said to me, he said to me, Neil Marsh and my friend, David Avenizi, he's a famous now, it's David Avenizian's uh, manager. And he said to me, um, it was probably, probably two years ago, he said to me, he said, um, don't be a busy fool. He said, don't be a busy fool. He said, look at your, look at your people you've got. He said, you just, I know I had everybody. I had everyone. I had 30, 40 fighters and I don't, I don't want that anymore because what am I going to do? What, when they're all asking for a date? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I, I don't want to put myself under that stress because I'll be honest, I'm running around all the time after putting fights and shows on for fighters and they're not going to get anywhere. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's, I don't want to be disrespectful, but there's levels in spot in boxing and some of these guys were signed up because they were selling tickets. Do you know what I'm saying? Whereas now I've got Conor Lynch six and zero, oh, Amy Timlin's four and zero, oh, uh, Nathan Farrell's three and zero, oh, uh, Ben Ryan's is three and one, and that one's just a learning fight. Um, uh, Brian Rose, he, he's he's doing really good. Do you know what I mean? We'll get him his fight, we'll get him his win, and we'll go on a little journey with Brian for the next uh, year or so. And um, look, th- there's a few more kids coming through. Niall Fielding, uh, Niall Berra, uh, Niall Berry just sparred Cash Farouk last week. He was fucking awesome, man. You know what I mean? And we're like, wow, this kid can do something. You know what I mean? So with a little bit of time and effort to the guys who we have signed up and that, we're gonna go far, mate. You know what I mean? And I know that in these different areas, we've got the fighters. We're gonna have um, we're gonna have champions at, at, at the vicious promotions. That's what it is, vicious promotions. We're gonna have champions there, mate. Exciting times. Well, Kieran, I'll let you get back to your day. I wish you the best of luck for the fight tonight. We had Ariton, and I'm sure we'll catch up very soon, mate. Thank you, Luke. Thank you. I'll see you later, mate. See you later.